Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. It's Trevor here with you today on this episode. And as always, we have a great guest. But before I introduce Joseph and tell you a little bit about him, today I also have a co-host, Mr. Deshay Smithen. Now he has his own podcast as well. So welcome, Deshay. Tell us just a little bit about your podcast first. Thank you, Trevor. Good evening, good, good afternoon, Joseph. Uh, yeah, so my name is Deshay. I run the Daily Brag podcast. Uh, it's just a podcast on achievement. Um, and achieving great things. The, 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 the name of the podcast is The Daily Brag. Brag is born ready to achieve greatness. And, um, you know, I hope everyone can go check it out. Thank you, Trevor. No, no, sounds good. Sounds good. So we're both here looking forward to chat to Joseph. Why? Well, Joseph has hundreds of millions of dollars of tracked sales from TV and online videos and commercials that he's created over the last two decades. He's directed thousands of campaigns for major brands like Google, LinkedIn, McDonald's. In 2017, he founded the site funnysalesvideos.com, which produces sales videos that go viral. He also hosts the podcast, How to Make a Video Go Viral, and he's here to share some of his wisdom and insight. So welcome, Joseph Wilkins. Thank you. It's good to be here. Appreciate you having me on the show. It's great to have the opportunity to to discover some of the the hidden gems that you've learned over the years uh, that everyone listening, and myself included, and Deshay, we can all learn and put into practice as well. So maybe just to kick us off, you started off founding Procreative Studios 20 odd years ago. But yep. before that, how did you get into sort of broadcasting video creation or just unpack a little bit about your story? Sure. So I grew up um, in London, as, as you might be able to tell by my accent. Um, and, and I actually grew up in the same kind of industry that I am in today, the creative industry. So my dad was actually a, a photographer um, for many different agencies, worked a lot for Vogue magazine. His biggest claim to fame is that he photographed the Queen of England at Balmoral Castle. Uh, you know, it doesn't get much bigger than that. Did the Rolling Stones cover, Jimi Hendrix, worked with Paul McCartney. You know, so he was pretty good at what he did. So I kind of grew up um, always thinking that I'd kind of follow in his footsteps. I went to college and studied um, graphic design. And then my first job was in marketing as a graphic designer. And that was kind of around the time that businesses were starting to use online video and uh, my boss basically said, who wants to go on a course to learn video? And I raised my hand and 20 years later, that's what I do for a living. That, that's the short story. Okay, no, that sounds interesting. So was there any sort of leanings towards being your own boss, becoming an entrepreneur early on? <laughs> yeah. or? Yes, so when I was about 11 um, in my village, just outside London, once we'd moved, I, I started a dog walking business and I would hire all of the local kids to go walk other people's dogs and I would charge a commission. And then I started um, landscaping and doing all these things. You know, I always knew that I didn't want to work for anyone else. I always wanted to be my own boss. Um, and that was kind of the beginnings of it. And, you know, I'm, I, I probably worked about five years in the corporate world and the rest have just been working for myself. Okay. Yeah. So then you started off in sort of TV commercials, sort of predominantly, but then sort of shifted more as the audiences went online. So you realized you had to navigate and reach them on a different platform. What was some of the challenges or maybe the aha moment when you realized that's what you needed to do? Yeah, good question. So when I started, um, I had a business partner that bought television air right so the space that the creative fits into and so the two of us together ran an agency for about 10 years um and and we our very first project in fact the job that helped me quit my corporate gig and start pro creative studios um was little giant ladder infomercial a, a show that did over 200 million dollars in sales from one infomercial so that kind of gave me the taste 
of what of how successful television 20 years ago could be I, I always qualify I was a very small part of that production but it, it still gave me kind of a foot in the door and then you know results started dropping after about a decade of doing purely television because people were getting TiVo, DVR, they were shifting to Hulu and all of these platforms that are, you know, you don't watch it live, you skip through the ads. And so our clients were seeing less and less return on their investment. And they started saying, you know, what can we do to get back to the days when we were making a lot more money? Um, and that's when we shifted to doing a lot more online, but still, you know, just traditional, what I call boring style corporate videos didn't get us the kinds of results that, that we're getting today. And I'll give you a comparison. So for 15 years, you know, the, the biggest video we had ever got online using our traditional, what I will what we'll call, um, you know, boring style corporate videos, we had one video that did 100,000 views. And we thought that was amazing. Fast forward to today, um, our biggest campaign between two videos has almost 70 million views. So that'll give you kind of, and views for the sake of views means nothing, but our videos are all very focused on driving a sale. And so, you know, that campaign has millions and millions of dollars attributed to it. But, you know, that the shift came probably about 15 years into the business where I realized I had to do something because my clients weren't happy. And that's when I discovered the Harmon Brothers University, which I don't know if you guys have heard of the Harmon Brothers. You've certainly heard of their videos, the pooping unicorn of, of Squatty Potty, the poopery, purple mattress, fiber fix. Anyway, they launched an online university and I was sold. So we basically went through all of their mentorship programs. In fact, I was on their podcast a couple of weeks ago um, and, you know, we, we've never looked back. All, all of the videos that we've done since have been into the millions of views compared to the, you know, much, much lower results that we got in our past life, should we say. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I try not to ask the really obvious question straight off, but what's the secret ingredient to get in? millions of views uh, i'm sure like i'm listening to you thinking i am way below that with regards to youtube videos at the moment and i'm sure lots of people listening maybe not in their head in agreement with me as well it's like there's certain certainly a lot we can learn um obviously time is short here but just what would be some of the things that maybe the top tips or the secret ingredient that we could at least start to think about adopting yes into video well actually i can answer that pretty quickly um with with a short answer and that is that it's all a lie anytime you see a video online that has millions of views recently um that is an ad i will guarantee 99 times out of 100 those weren't organically reached video views so what we do is we don't tell our clients, we'll make your video go organically viral. What we do is we say, imagine that I was to build for you a vending machine full of $100 bills and it never runs out, but it costs $20 to use that machine. How many times would you want to use that machine? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> over and over again, right? That's a silly <laughs> question. But that's what we do. We create a video that when you fuel it, with a paid ad, so the $20, it will bring you, you know, two, three, four, five plus return times return on investment, right? So $20 in, $100 back. And that's why our videos have tens of millions of views is because our clients are seeing that return on investment when they spend that money. If it didn't bring it back, you know, our videos would have hundreds, maybe thousands of views wouldn't have tens of millions of views because our clients would stop spending the money. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. So, so anytime you see these big videos that have tens of millions of views, maybe five, maybe 10% of those views were organic. We do get a very big boost from people sharing it and blogging about it and you know 
sending it to their grandma, but that's not the lion's share. That's maybe five to 10%. The majority of it is based on paid traffic, which is a great thing to realize because it means you can control it. A viral video, a truly organic viral video, nobody can predict that. Nobody can repeat that. Nobody can build a business model based on catching lightning in a bottle. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so the secret ingredient then is paid ads yes. to, to some extent. But also, once you've got someone there, you're able to keep the viewer's attention, aren't you? People don't just click on it and then bounce off. People watch exactly. it through to the point where they then it converts to sales, as you say. So what would be, you know where I'm going with this one as well, don't you? Um, curious as much as anything, but there must be a certain pattern, if that's the right way, or Absolutely. certain absolute content the do's and don'ts some yes. of some of the things you've learned that yeah this really works and converts this absolutely so yeah and and that's pretty much all we talk about in my podcast how to make a video go viral but i'll really quickly run through it and we have a free ebook that completely answers your question it's called how to make a, a funny sales video without hiring us and it's a free download at funny videos.com but the pattern is number one before you even start making a video, understand who your customer is and why they care or what their problems are so that your messaging hits the target. And that's marketing 101. But the first step is understanding and doing your research. The second thing is to brainstorm as many ideas as possible. The worse ideas, the better. You're not looking for quality at the beginning. You're looking for quantity. So whoever is in the group and, you know, the, the, the wisdom of the crowd is always better than one person. We learned that on how to make him, how to, how to be a millionaire, how to, what's, what's that game show that, that polls you the audience? Be a millionaire. Yeah, yeah a millionaire. millionaire. Exactly. So, so you want to create a group, whether that's employees in your company, whether that's, you know, hiring some freelancers off of Fiverr to collect ideas, but throw out, you know, 50 plus crazy ideas. And you're really just looking for two things. Who's the character here? And what's the problem that they have? And try to make it as, as disruptive as possible. Advertising is all about stopping the scroll and keeping the attention. So throw out as many ideas as you can and then whittle it down to the best. And finally, you got to decide on one. We talk a lot of, more about that in the ebook. Then go out and make a script that follows the following formula. The first five to 10 seconds is the most important. Nothing matters after that five to 10 seconds if you haven't grabbed my attention. So you've got to think about what visually, because most people, 80% will watch your video with the sound off. So it's got to be visual. If you look at our videos at funnysalesvideos.com, we dump as much of the creative juices into that first five to 10 seconds. And then hopefully you'll catch their, their eye enough and you can use that with graphics and crazy things going on that they'll, you know, the curiosity will be, will be enough for them to turn that sound on and listen to your message. Once they've done that, you've got to present very quickly what the problem is. And it's got to be a problem that your customer can relate to. Now, it could be in a fantasy world. It can be in a crazy, exaggerated way and the bigger, the better. But it can't be so silly and so, you know, unrelatable that it doesn't connect on a fundamental, you know, I've got that problem too. So then you have to bring in the solution, which is your product or your service, or if you're an agency, your client's product and service. And you've got to beat them over the head very quickly with the top benefits. Um, we typically will tell people our videos, and a lot of people will ask, well, your videos are long. How do people don't watch long videos anymore? And I say, well, I have data to the contrary. People don't watch boring videos. Netflix is the biggest, you know, content creator on the planet. And they don't have 15 second videos. People will watch long content if you keep it engaging and interesting. And the other secret is most people are watching our ads on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram. Why are they there in the first place? They're not there to be sold. They're there to be entertained. So we basically dress our ads as sketch comedy. Most people don't realize that our ads are ads until 30 seconds, maybe even a minute into the ad when we finally reveal, oh, here's the solution. 
And here's a here's a irresistible offer for you to try that solution. So I, I could talk a lot longer, but you've also got to add really good comedy. So we typically, our ad is about 80% entertainment and only 20% sales. And it can't be, you know, in one big chunk. So we'll tell you a joke and then we'll give you a little bit of a sales teaser. Then we'll tell you another joke or tell you a story and then, you know, give you another bit of sales information. So it's kind of like sneaking your vegetables into your kid's dinner, right? It's, it's a way to get across to people to cut through the clutter, but to also make them smile and laugh. And hopefully if you've done your homework, that's the formula. And again, there's a lot more in the, 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 that we could talk about, but, but that's how you, you make yourself disruptive and different to your competitors. Joseph, uh, if I can ask a question here, are you guys selective on who you hire as far as your sketch writers? Or, I mean, how do you go about selecting sketch writers? Great question, great question. That's probably the hardest part of my job and it's a, it's a constant process. So our average script goes through about 10 writers. That wow. doesn't mean one writer and then I fire them and go on to the next. It means yeah. there's 10 different people. Just like I said, the wisdom of the crowd is always best because I typically will go through, I have about two marketing copywriters then I'll have a main story creative writer that's writing the story. So there's about three people that are writing the basis of the story, but it's not funny yet. Then right. I'll add in five or six really good comedy writers. And most comedy writers that I work with are actually stand-up comics as a living. Right. So that's their day job. I, you can't, the worst thing that you can be is try to be funny, yeah. but, but not. <laughs> right. You, you, I mean, it may work, um, you know, with a dad telling dad jokes to their kids, but if you're trying to put a, across a professional company and are trying to speak to, you know, C-suite executives, you got to speak on their level. You can't be silly. You can't, unless you're doing a, you know, a product for a tween acne cream, then you talk to their language, right? So different kinds of writing, but we will throw 80% of our jokes on the floor, even if they're really funny, because they have to be funny, but also relevant to advance the sale. Our goal is not to be funny. Our goal is to make a sale. The vehicle is humor. humor. So yes, going through many, many comedy writers and constantly looking for better talent. That's, that's a lot of what we do, but great question. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just a, just a, a quick follow up here uh, for you, Joseph. So how do you source them? Do you actually go out to the comedy clubs or yeah. how do you source your comedians? <laughs> well, d during COVID, I don't do too much comedy clubs. I do a lot of online research. So I okay. love to watch, um, you know, good comedy. And I'll say just one thing about comedy. You know, there's there's two schools of comedy, right? There's 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 a uh, blue or off color R rated comedy. You can't do that on Facebook. You'll get black banned, you'll get blocked. I also just love creating content that anyone can enjoy watching. And so you gotta look for very clever comedians that don't use foul language, you know, R rated humor. And right. so I, I watch a lot of online comedians that fit into that category. And then I reach out to them. I also go on sites like Fiverr and Upwork, and there's a lot of these kinds of online freelance comedy sites. And you'd be surprised, you know, if, if you want to make a video, go reach out to comedians because most of them, they only work at night. I actually have some that work on cruise ships and most of their time, they're literally sitting on the beach in the Caribbean. And so wow. they love it when they can fill <laughs> that time with paid, you know, freelance work. Yeah. And, okay. and that way I'm also not paying them when they're not working for me, you know? So it's, yeah. that, that's how I do it. Is there a different price for getting them when they're just hanging out on the beach or? Actually in COVID, a lot of those guys are doing nothing because the cruise ships aren't even sailing. So, they, yeah. I, yeah. I think they're starting again, but. No, yeah, great, great questions. It's a really good point you make, though, because I was listening, thinking, yeah, some people are just listening and they're thinking to themselves, they almost write themselves off like, well, I'm just not funny. Yes. So I can't yes. do that. But I'm it, not funny, not. guys. I'm not funny. In fact, 
for the first 15 years, for the true story, first 15 years of my career, when a client would call us up and say, hey, we just saw this really funny video. We want to do something like that. I would literally say to them, sorry, we don't do funny. Go somewhere else. Because you've got to have the team in place. I mean, think about a place like Saturday Night Live. That is a constant nightmare of every week they've got to put on an hour long or however long that show is. Every week it's got to be fresh. And so, you know, having that writer's room full of people that are not only funny, but that are quick, that can punch it out fast. I mean, our average video takes between three and six months to produce. They've got a week. So, you know, that you've got to make sure that you get the right people on the bus to try to do one of these. Yeah. 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 On average, how many takes does it take to just get that one shoot right? (laughs) (laughs) so we always say if the video is exactly the way that it's scripted we did something wrong because we love to film what we scripted but then we hire actors and that's another thing i go into detail in the book you've got to pick the right actors a lot of the actors that we hire are actually improv comic comedians so they not only will give me what's on the script but then we'll say, you know, let's do a, a take and just play with it. Just improvise. In fact, we were doing an audition last week. We had a whole bunch of clients in the studio. We had two actors that we were pretty sure we were going to cast. And I said to them, don't use anything on the script. Think about what was in the script and just do your own thing. And it was so much better. Um, but, we, you know, typically our videos are about three minutes long. And we'll, ha- we'll do that in about two days of filming. So you can imagine, you know, with a video that's only three minutes, we're doing each take probably 10 times at least. Yeah. So is, is there a, a, a good level of how many times you mention the product? I think you said about 20% of the, the length of the video kind of mentions or shows the product or yes. elaborates a bit more. Is that the, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, Okay, you've obviously got the call to action right because of the returns that you're getting. So yes. what are some of the bits that maybe we need to factor into our call to actions wrapped up with the humor and how we present it, starting off with you know the first 10 seconds or so getting people's attention. But then rather than you know, have them laugh for, for sort of five minutes and then suddenly they lose interest when we try and make a sale, how elaborate a little bit more on the call to action side of it how what's a good way of doing it and what isn't Um, well the first the first thing to say is do it you'd be amazed at how many companies out there have gone out and tried to do a funny video and some of them have succeeded and very well and i and i think about sometimes the super bowl spots there are millions of dollars poured it poured into those and some of them two commercials later you can't even remember what it was for the jokes are more important than the product. And to me, you know, I, I mean, I'm sure there's very intelligent people behind those, but to me, if I can't remember something two minutes later, it's a fail. And so we try to create the story that basically becomes the support for the product. So everything about the video, other than the first five to 10 seconds, because those, it doesn't matter what's that, what that's about, that's purely to hook your attention, it's clickbait. But then from then on, everything has to drive the problem that leads to the solution. And then if you if you use the product as the hero and introduce it and then continue to show it as the hero, we find, you know, not only does reten- uh, does sales go up, but retention and retargeting and top of what mind awareness skyrockets. We even have clients that have products that they've been trying to get into supermarkets and the supermarket buyers say, we've never heard of you. We, we won't stock you. And then our videos go quote unquote viral and people start calling them saying customers are coming into the store, ask it literally asking for your product. And so, you know, the, the top of mind can't be underestimated as to the value of that as well. But, but you want, coming back to question, number one, make sure you have a clear ask. The confused customer never buys. So you've got to clearly de- define what it is you're selling. 
don't give them options. Don't, if you've got, you know, a widget that comes in five different configurations, that'll confuse the heck out of your customer. Choose one widget, choose one offer, and clearly define this is it and this is how much it's going to cost or come up with a much better way of presenting an irresistible offer, whether that's a free trial, whether that's a, you know, buy one, get one free. You may even lose money on the initial offer, but if you've got a good funnel on the back end, you can upsell, cross-sell. You know, if the value of one new customer over a lifetime is very high, you can figure out a way that this is going to pay off. And again, this is all business tactics that, you know, are beyond my level of, of scope, but, you know, that's really the kind of way you need to think is how do I get an irresistible offer that's simple and then clearly communicate that offer, not once, at least twice in your video. And then you can follow up with retargeting and other messages for people who don't immediately buy. Okay, yeah. And is there more of a ratio of the visual must see the product, product twice? but we also mention it and refer to it, or is that, am I overthinking it from that perspective? Well, I would say our typical video, we don't actually introduce the product in a lot of our videos until a minute in, because you've got to establish this character and build trust with them, kind of establish a relationship. It's like a, a, a telemarketing person calling you and saying, hey, Trevor, here's a product, do you want to buy it? You're like, who the heck are you? Yeah. But if they were to call you up and spend some time talking to you, get to know you, establish a connection with you, you're much more likely to buy when they finally say, okay, so now that I understand your problem, let me just tell you what works for me. That's going to be a much higher level of engagement than just right out of the bat, shove the call to action down your throat. But once we introduce the product, you pretty much never see a shot without it in it from then on out because we're constantly reinforcing the benefits of it or bringing other people in to back up with customer testimonials and demonstrations and you know head-to-head -head comparisons whatever we can do to think of ways to continually reinforce the the value of why your life's going to be better if you click the link below sounds really good there's a lot of wisdom a lot of wisdom in what you're saying definitely it's like human nature we're wired to buy aren't we it's not we don't have to try and convince people to spend money it's we have to try and explain to them why buying our product or service benefits them um, yeah yeah makes a lot and a lot of your listeners may not have a physical product we have done this for b2b b2c direct to consumer products, services, lead generation, literally any kind of action that you want to take, you want your customer or potential customer to take, um, you can use these principles and you can try to do it, you know, the full blown way that we do it by having every duck in a row and every duck being a, you know, the best professional to do that. Or there's certain steps that you can do on your own on a very low budget. The two things I would say don't skimp on are the writing and the actors that you choose. Everything else you can do on a much lower budget. You can film one of these with your iPhone. I'm convinced that if you follow the steps, get great script writers and a get a great actor, the rest of it you could do on a shoestring budget and probably double the returns of any other ad that you're currently running. Thank you. Yeah, Joseph, and I was going to ask um, with that too. So if I'm, if I'm a guy that's listening to this podcast and this is an interesting industry for me, what is their first set of activities, right? So it's, it's finding, maybe they can use their iPhone, like you said, so they can do it on a shoestring budget and then getting good writers. What are some of the other activities that they should take to be successful in, in that line of business? So I, I, again, it really comes down to the eight steps that are in my ebook, right? Don't skip the steps, but you can do the steps yourself. But if any one of the steps is missed, then it's like building a house. A lot of people say to me, I want to go start, uh, I want to start a video and I'm going to start with the comedy. Well, that's kind of like saying, I'm going to build a house and I'm going to start with the roof. 
unless you understand all of the other things that go before that, you don't have a foundation and it's going to crumble. The other thing to think about is, as I said at the beginning, these ads don't, Facebook and YouTube and Instagram are way too complex nowadays to try to get one past them. The second they see that your video that you're posting is actually an ad, they categorize it completely differently. And so you're not going to get a bunch of views on it unless you use paid traffic. So if you're going to be putting money into paid traffic, it, it makes sense to put the money into the production first or else you're spending money on stuff that isn't as good. There's a reason that we have tens of millions of dollars in sales from these kinds of videos, but version one is better than version none. If you're a business owner sitting there thinking, you know, I've heard this many times before and most people in marketing, they've seen these videos, they've seen success studies. I mean, it's gen genuinely 10 X any other kinds of videos that we've produced. And, you know, as you heard from my bio, I've worked with some of the biggest brands in the world. Yeah. So I would say, look at, look at what your competitors are doing and then look at what these principles would make your ad look like. And you'll realize it's marketing is all about doing what your competitors aren't. It's doing what your customers don't expect. But with this kind of marketing, a lot of companies will say, well, I don't know if my business is right for funny. It's not a funny kind of business to mm -hmm. me that's even more reason to do it because your competitors won't be. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It's thinking outside the box again, isn't it? Rather than just following the, the conformity of your industry. Absolutely. And we've also done this with, you know, we've done this with very, very large companies. One of the recent case studies that we just did an interview with the business owner was a, was a company that came to us, literally a one-man band. I think he had his wife that worked for him. And, you know, they'd spent less than $100,000 the previous year on marketing. And we sat down with them and we said, okay, if you're going to do this, we're obviously going to increase that budget because there's no point creating a video and then having no budget to spend on promoting it. And we started very, very small and we just interviewed him and year over year, he's doubled his sales. Wow. Like what, what would it do to your business regardless of how big it is? And the other thing that he said is that it was manageable growth we didn't blow it up from from day one it's to a point where he was sold out of inventory and couldn't manage that's the beauty of paid ads is you can throttle it up and then throttle it down so regardless of what kind of a business you are these principles can help you yeah thank you for all that you've shared i know you're very passionate about helping people develop and get returns on their videos um hence the free ebook that's on your site. So just, we, we do need to wrap it up because time has escaped us, sure. um, but yeah. you've shared so many good insights already. I watched one of the videos um, before we started the, the interview. And as you were explaining the different steps, I'm thinking through the video and, and I can see the bits that you've, you've mentioned <laughs> and how you've constructed it. So for everybody listening, I would definitely recommend head to funnysalesvideos.com, watch some other videos, get the ebook and look at the steps and then use those videos as the demonstration, the example of how those steps are implemented. It's a perfect, perfect system and it's free. So appreciate your generosity, Joseph, on that. Um, I know you're very busy with work as well. Um, that's what success does, doesn't it really? Those <laughs> <laughs> are time yeah. with things. Um, but no, thank you for sharing your expertise and your wisdom today with us um, i'm sure everybody listening has got one or two takeaways at least that they're going to put into practice straight away um, even if the first step is just thinking about approaching it completely differently to how they have so far if it's not working something needs to change doesn't it that's the that's yeah the um, and and you can also use these principles in your email marketing in your magazine ads think about what is my competitor not doing and how can i interject a voice that lets people know that we're human right we get you we we don't take ourselves too seriously there's all kinds of other applications uh, the videos is just obviously my forte but any other marketing campaign can benefit from these kinds of ideas yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, no, and your videos are very good. Yeah, they are funny. Thank you. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Just as we wrap this up, the shade. Did you have a, a final question or anything you want to ask Joseph? No, you know, I was going to ask Joseph, um, and I, I, I don't want to take up too much more time, but I was going to ask him how competitive is the market that he's that you're in, Joseph? I'm of an abundance mindset. There is. I mean, how many businesses on the planet are trying to pivot right now and do the digital yeah. shift to online sales? Every single business out there can benefit from these kinds of videos. And yes, I mean, the Harmon Brothers were the pioneers of these kinds of videos. And because they launched Harmon Brothers University, there are a, a decent amount of competitors out there, which is great. That makes us all you know, sharpen our saw and, and keep re refining our skills. But you know, I, I think there's many businesses out there that are doing a better job than we are. We're by no means the best, um, but we keep darn busy. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's a sign of success. Definitely. Thank you. We must wrap this up for now. Um, but yeah, we really do appreciate your generosity and giving your time and, and sharing with us. Um, I've certainly been challenged into how I approach things and we'll definitely be looking at those videos again. Um, and awesome. Also, like also, also check out the podcast. That's that's the place that you absolutely. can learn probably more than anything about these kinds of things. Yes. And that was how to make a video go viral, isn't it? And that's available. You can connect to that through the website as well as on podcast platform. Uh, it's it's on any podcast platform you can imagine. Just type in how to make a video go viral and uh, you should find it. And it's got a really good intro. So I should I would recommend everybody at least listening to the first part of the intro to start with, and then you'll just be sucked into benefit. Well, well, well that's, that's the hook. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, it works. Joseph, I'll be listening to the, uh, I'll definitely uh, read the book, uh, How to Make a Video Go Viral. Yeah, uh, I awesome. think it would be beneficial, even, even with me and uh, the podcast that I'm starting and, you know, trying to learn how to yeah. market stuff on, on Instagram and social media in general. Yeah. Hit, hit me up. Maybe we can chat on that podcast too. And if anyone wants to hit me up on LinkedIn, you can just uh, type in Joseph Wilkins, funny sales videos, and let's connect. Sounds Sounds good. Great. Thank you, Joseph. Brilliant. Thank yeah. you, guys. It's been great chatting with you. Uh, thanks again. Um, for everybody listening, yes, definitely take some action. Listen to this again. Go to the site. Look at the ebook. Um, if you're not proactive, you're not going to make any changes, and then you're going to be exactly where you are now. And if that's fine and that works for you, brilliant. But I think we can all make in improvements and changes. So, yeah, highly recommend that. Until next time, thank you all for listening. Thanks for joining us, guys. And we will catch you next time. See ya. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you for listening to Yukai Business Show. We will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts. Want more? Check out www.yukaibusinessshow.com. Get your free trial of our virtual assistance service today. Just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Quote W O S 1 8 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com.